Hey guys, it's Dwight here with Tire Spine. Going to do another install video for you guys. Uh, today we're going to do a 26 814 insert, which is something you would find in a utility ATV or a smaller UTV, depending on the wheel and tire application that you have. Uh, I've already went ahead and uh, lubed up our insert and as well as the tire. If you haven't put one of these in before, the lube comes with the product. But what you want to do is do a thin coat of lube all over the entire insert and as well as the tire, making sure that you also lube the, the seam here. What you want to do is lay your tire on the ground, like so. Take where the product is cut or slid and feed it into the tire carcass. Once it's there, it's feed it fit in, it's bottomed out on the tire tread wall. What you want to do for the concept is the same as what we did with the Sport ATV with a corkscrew type shape. Uh, again, you're not going to feed it in like a corkscrew, uh, but it's a concept of what you're working for. One of the things you'll need is a tire spoon, uh, just a good solid one. Uh, I prefer the ones that come from Rocky Mountain ATV. I believe this is a tusk spoon. Uh, it doesn't bend, it's got a good length on it to work with. Once you've started the insert in like this, it's nice to have, if you're by yourself, to have a stationary object, a wall, a fender well, a tire of a vehicle, or another ATV. If you're using two guys, you can use them to help you as well. Uh, doesn't, doesn't take any more than that, just a few simple tools and then yourself. Uh, once you've got this started, go ahead and put the tire against whatever stationary object it is, whether it's this or uh, another person, and then start to feed the insert in. Again, it's again, like I said, with the Sporty V tire, you're going to sit here and do the corkscrew method in. Um, it also works out if you use your legs as well. And then just take a spoon, and what you're going to do is feed it around the lip of the tire, and then kind of just feed and force it in there as you're spinning it up. And you'll start to feel it start to feed its way in. Again, just work around the beat of the tire here. Just keep pushing the insert in while you spin and push. It'll eventually start to push its way in. As you can see, it starts to fall into the tire. Just work in a circle around the tire itself. And you feed it in. There'll be a point where it meets and it doesn't look like it's going anymore. What you have to do is a couple times nearing it, as you can see, as you start to feed the insert in, it kind of pushes its way back up level to the, the B wall. Just reach in, push it in, it'll fill the void. Throw your tire back down and continue the process of it spinning in and feeding it in with the tire spin. Once you've done it a couple times, it starts to become much easier around. The last part is usually the easy section here. Just take it, force it in. Again, just like the sport tire, ATV front tire, you have a, a, a pretty substantial amount of foam that you're going to try to push into there. Again, push it in as far as you can with your hand. It's still a gap. Unlike the sport ATV, you will need a couple other tools. These are all tools that you can pick up at any old hardware. Of course, most people have a drill. You can use a half inch impact, three eighths, air, whatever you got, electric. The next thing you need is a scissor jack. Pick it up at most local automotive places, O'Reilly's, Napa, AutoZone, whatever works for you. What you want to do is you've got the insert that is sticking up and where the wheel will go. What you do is you take the jack. Works best if you turn it upside down, opposite of what you'd be using it for a vehicle. And what you want to do is Put it on top of the insert that is here in the tire and try to center the jack up more towards the insert itself, not towards the wheel opening, and then push it back in there. Once you're lined up about where you want to be your feet, pull it in, take your drill. It may take a couple times, not always the first time, we'll pop right down in there, but as you do it, you just readjust and then eventually you can get the insert to close the gap that's there. This one went in, for the most part, almost all the way in the first try. And what you want to do is, it's a little bit that's sticking up, you can 
can just readjust the tire and then use the jack itself to push the remaining what's left into the, the opening thing. Once that's complete, it sits like this. The next thing you do is start your bead in just like normal. Press the tire through, flip it over. Um, sometimes if it's a beadlock ring, you may have a little bit of a gap. Again, any kind of weight of, of a person or just some longer bolts to help pull you the bead down until you can start, that'll work. If for some reason this is sitting up a little bit higher than the flush that you got here, it's not a big deal. The rim will push it through and you'll be able to get it done.